Since childhood, my life has been difficult. I lost my parents at an early age and had to earn a living on my own. At a very young age, I started working in the market, unloading groceries, and helping the merchants. It was very difficult, since childhood I understood how hard it is to earn money. But such harsh conditions did not allow me to relax and force me to achieve success in this life. I have always dreamed of something bigger, of creating my own store where I can offer people a huge variety of exotic fruits from all over the world. This idea has become a source of inspiration for me and my goal. To achieve success, I set to work hard. I studied everything related to the fruit business, storage requirements, transportation, ways to attract customers. With the money saved, I was able to travel, visit farms, establish contacts with suppliers to learn all about the process of growing and harvesting fruits. I developed a detailed plan of action and carefully prepared for the opening of the store. I studied the market, analyzed supply and demand in order to create a unique offer for my future clients. I have strived to offer only the finest and freshest exotic fruits to satisfy the tastes of even the most demanding customers. And then came the long-awaited day, the opening day of the store. It took me a long time to earn enough money. It was incredibly hard without having a decent education. But I never backed down from my goal, and now, finally, I got as close as possible to the realization of my dream. I decorated the store with colorful posters, fresh fruit scents, and eye-catching designs to grab the attention of passers-by. My store turned into a real corner of the Garden of Eden, where bright colors and aromas of various fruits reigned. From the first day of opening, success was not long in coming. I quickly established a reputation as a reliable supplier of the highest quality exotic fruits. My clients appreciated my efforts, attention to detail and willingness to offer them something special. My shop has become a permanent place for those who want to diversify their diet and discover new tastes. I have seen smiles appear on the faces of my clients when they taste exotic fruits that they had only heard about before. My determination, dedication to the dream and the pursuit of excellence have helped me achieve success. I have created not just a store, but also a place where I can bring joy and satisfaction to the lives of many people, making their experience of buying fruits unforgettable. One day, on a very ordinary day, when I was doing business in my store, I noticed a strange woman who came to the store. She caught my attention with her effortless beauty and enigmatic eyes. Her black hair touched her shoulders, and her shining eyes seemed to hold secrets. I decided to approach and ask how I can help. When I approached and addressed her, she smiled and replied. Hi, I'm Monica. I heard about your exotic fruit shop and decided to check it out. I have always been attracted to unusual and new tastes. I smiled back and said. Nice to meet you, Monica. I'm Peter, the owner of this store. We have a really large selection of exotic fruits. If you're interested, I can take you through the store and tell you about each one. Maybe you will find something that will interest your gastronomic curiosity. Monica nodded with a smile and agreed to the proposal. We started walking around the store, and I began to tell her about the origin and characteristics of each fruit. We talked about flavors, aromas, and ways to use exotic fruits in various dishes. During our conversation, I realized that Monica is not only a lover of good food, but also a smart and educated woman. We shared our views on culture, travel, and art. The conversation flowed naturally, as if we had known each other for a long time. At the end of our walk through the store, Monica said, Peter, thank you for such an interesting introduction to the world of exotic fruits. I found what I was looking for, new tastes and inspiration for my culinary experiments. It was very nice to meet you. I smiled and replied, I'm glad I could bring joy and inspiration to your life, Monica. If you still have questions or if you need anything else, know that you can always contact me. I'll be glad to help. You are a very unusual seller. I have never seen such customer service. I will definitely visit you again. Thank you very much for your detailed advice. I will always be happy to help you more. Be sure to come back. I answered with a smile. Monica thanked me and left the store with a smile on her face. At that moment, I realized that this was an unusual acquaintance, which brought into my life not only a new client, but also an interesting interlocutor. After our first meeting in the store, I couldn't stop thinking about Monica. Her presence and conversations with her left a pleasant impression in my heart. 
I regularly checked to see if she had reappeared in the store, hoping to see her again. And now, a few weeks later, Monica again went to the store. My heart began to beat faster and I immediately walked over to her. Hey, Monica. Glad to see you here again. How are your gastronomic experiments going? I asked with a smile. Monica smiled and replied, Hey Peter. Everything is fine. Thanks to your fruits, my culinary creations have become even more delicious and original. I'm even thinking about starting my own recipe blog. This is amazing. I admired. I am always ready to support your creative endeavors. If you need help with groceries or anything, just say so. Monica looked at me gratefully and added, Peter, I would like to thank you for your kindness and interesting conversations. Perhaps you would like to go to dinner with me? I would like to continue our communication outside the store. My eyes lit up with joy and I couldn't hide my smile. Of course, Monica. I will gladly accept your invitation. I have a wonderful place where we can try a variety of exotic dishes and more. What do you think about tomorrow evening? Monica nodded in agreement and said, Sounds great, Peter. I am looking forward to tomorrow's meeting. We exchanged contact details, and I was already looking forward to our date. It was clear that there was a special bond between us, and I was ready to move forward to get to know Monica even better. Our dinner tomorrow evening was filled with excitement and anticipation. I decided to choose a restaurant with a cozy atmosphere and an exclusive menu to please Monica. When she arrived, I saw that she looked simply magnificent, in her dress she radiated grace and charm. During dinner we enjoyed great meals and also enjoyed desserts which used exotic fruits from my shop. We talked about our interests, dreams and aspirations. The longer we talked, the more I realized that Monica is not only a woman whom I wanted to know better, but also a spiritual companion with whom I can share my joys and sorrows. After this dinner, Monica and I began to meet more often. We spent time together, and each meeting was filled with laughter, mutual understanding, and support. She became my stronghold in life, and I supported her in everything she did. Over time, our relationship became stronger and deeper. We traveled together, and Monica supported me in my business endeavors, and I, in turn, did everything possible to make her dreams and ambitions a reality. After 19 years of happy marriage with Monica, our life has become truly supportive. I've been amazed at how far I've come since just unloading groceries. My exotic fruit business prospered and I achieved considerable success. Monica was no longer working and I easily provided her with everything she needed. Warmth and harmony reigned in our house. I tried to make every day special for Monica. In the morning I gave her breakfast in bed, and in the evening I arranged romantic dinners by candlelight. Of course, it was not every day, but I tried to pamper my wife as often as possible. I loved seeing her happy, and every time I saw a smile on her face, my heart was filled with joy. But one day something happened that disturbed my peace. I received an unexpected call from my friend, Mark. His voice sounded worried, and I immediately felt that something was wrong. Peter, you won't believe what I just saw. I was in the city center, I was just with my wife at the cinema. Our session was over, and I was leaving the room, and suddenly I saw Monica come into the next room, she was with some guy. They were very close, even hugging. I thought you should know about this. Thanks, Mark, but maybe you mixed something up? Peter, I'm sorry, to be honest. I'm not sure exactly, but she looked a lot like Monica. Okay, Mark. Thanks. At first I thought it was some kind of confusion. I decided to call Monica, but she did not pick up the phone. I called again and again, but got no answer. My hands began to shake and my heart began to race. I tried again and again to call Monica, but she did not pick up the phone. Excitement and anxiety took over me completely. I felt that I needed to act immediately to find out the truth. I decided to go to the movie theater where Mark claimed Monica had gone. My heart was beating faster with each step, and I felt a mixture of fear and determination. When I arrived at the place, I found that the session had already begun. I was so tense that I didn't notice that it wasn't the same theater that Monica went into. Opening the door with a noise, I rushed in, drawing the attention of everyone present. Monica, where are you? I screamed in hysterics. Man, leave the room immediately. 
a security guard came up to me and took me outside. I started to struggle, realizing that I had entered the wrong room. Let go, bitch, I have to find my wife. I screamed hysterically, escaping from the hands of the guard. But suddenly the phone rang. It was Monica. Honey, something happened, I just now saw a bunch of missed calls from you. I dozed off at home and didn't hear, sorry. It's all right, honey, it's all right now. I replied. I was taken out of the building. And I went home feeling relieved. When I got home, I saw Monica sitting on the couch, watching TV, like nothing had happened. I quickly walked over to her and hugged her. Monica did not understand why I was so uptight, but I said that I just had a hard day today. But Monica has really started to change lately. I felt that she behaved differently. It may have happened before, but I didn't notice it. But the incident in the cinema sobered me. I tried to get rid of these stupid thoughts, but I could not help myself. They got more and more into my head. I thought for a long time how to get rid of these thoughts, realizing that Monica could not cheat on me, it was simply impossible for me. But still, to calm myself, I secretly installed a secret application on Monica's phone, thanks to which I always knew where Monica was. I promised myself that I would only watch Monica for a while to calm my paranoia, and then delete this tracking app. Little time has passed. I saw that Monica went to the same places that I knew well. But one day Monica came up to me. Honey, I have a girlfriend, Leslie, if you remember, had an accident, she is now in serious condition, and I wanted to go to her place for a couple of days to visit. Yes, of course, I remember, do you need help from me? Should I go with you? No, Peter, you don't. I myself will leave quickly and come back, and you mind your own business, you already have a lot of work. I let Monica go without any doubt, because I knew Leslie well. But after a while I noticed on the tracking program that Monica did not go to Leslie at all. Monica was in a sector with private houses on the outskirts of the city. This greatly confused and alarmed me. I did not reassure myself again, but quickly got into the car and drove to this place. I quickly got to the place where Monica was. It was not yet quite finished cottage. There were no neighbors around. The building was on a hill. A small terrace was built next to it. Under the terrace there was a slope with thorn bushes. It looks like they haven't cleared the area yet. The terrace was fixed on fresh supports that rose from the bottom of the slope. They have not yet been sufficiently fixed. On the terrace I saw Monica and some guy. I took a closer look and recognized this bastard. It was the owner of one of the restaurants where I supplied food. I always didn't. Like this bastard, he constantly delayed payments. They sat in chairs on the terrace and drank wine. I moved closer to listen to their conversation. Monica, it's just a wonderful evening. I'm so glad you're here again. Said this bastard, whose name was Victor. And how glad I am that I got out of my boredom. I'm already so fed up with Peter that I can't tell you. If it weren't for his condition, I would have already left him. Get rid of that bastard. I will provide everything for you. Victor, you even bought this unfinished cottage on credit. And I need reliability. Maybe I have financial problems now, but I will definitely solve this issue. In the meantime, come here and treat me to your charms. Victor beckoned my wife to him. Monica put her glass down on a small table and climbed on top of Victor. These bastards began to undress right in front of my eyes. I was overcome by anger and despair. I didn't expect it to be so bad. Anger began to take over, it clouded my thoughts. My machine was powerful enough to bring down those terrace supports. It was already dark enough that I was able to subtly stretch and tie a tow rope to a support, then I tied it to my car. Full of determination, I began to accelerate the gas pedal and then jerked sharply, tearing out the support. The terrace began to bow sharply, and these bastards flew into the thorn bushes with a squeal. I got out of the car and approached them. The scratched bastards were trying to get out of the bushes. So you did it, you bastard. Victor yelled when he saw me. Shut your mouth, you dirty bastard. I'll deal with you again, I promise you. I yelled back and kicked the bastard back into the thorny bushes. Peter, what are you doing? Wait. Let me explain everything. 
Monica began to justify herself with tears. What are you going to explain to me, creature? How are you fucking with that bastard? I heard and saw everything, bitch. Such a dirty and deceitful creature cannot be my wife. Don't bother making excuses, we're getting a divorce. I shouted and threw a handful of dirt right in her face. Then I got back in my car and left this dirty place. Thanks to my powerful connections, which I already had at that time, I found out that this bastard, Victor, owed a lot to someone. His restaurant was on the verge of closing, and I made sure that this restaurant was closed, as he had a lot of illegally employed employees. Victor was threatened not only with new debts, but also a term behind bars for breaking the law. So I provided enough trouble for the bastard, and now he won't have a rich and happy life, as he said. And I divorced Monica. This bitch has already forgotten what it means to work. But now she will have to remember all this, since I left her nothing of my property. Only her poverty remained with her. I overcame bitterness and resentment. My life went on and I was able to enjoy new amazing discoveries in a happy life without burdening myself with the deceit of the past.